Welcome everyone to the Nerd Nook. I'm your host, Evan Teague, with me, like always, is Noah Bailey. So, Comic-Con is happening right now. We're not going to get into any of that stuff. Just know there's a lot of fun stuff that has happened recently. We're probably going to take a full Comic-Con recap probably next week. But that's fine. We have a lot of stuff from the last two weeks to cut, catch up on. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> so, the first thing I think... The most important thing to, to, to bring up before we really get started is the fact that a writer strike has been happening since May, and now, on top of that, the actor's strike is also currently in effect. Yeah. Meaning that pretty much every single production of anything has been completely halted until you know certain demands are, are met or at least negotiated for. So we'll see how that how that impacts things in the future. <laughs> yeah, like it's one of those things that I don't think has hit anybody like regular people yet because things are made so ahead mm -hmm. of time from when they're released that like regular people haven't noticed yet. But if this keeps going for a while, all of a sudden there's going to be no new anything and people are going to lose it. And yeah. I think that's where the actors are kind of banking off because like who can hold out the longest because it's like if we make it to the point where we're out of new stuff the people will force like the company's hands mm -hmm. for sure like i do know that uh tv channels like uh nbc abc cbs like these you know, like the, these channels that you know run you know like you know, reruns of shows or, or like you know should have new shows coming out that just didn't film new episodes or just, just things just didn't line up to be produced in time that are they're having to take stuff from streaming and put them there like miss marvel Oof. is going to be streaming on abc i think uh uh yellowstone is going to be airing on um on cbs like these Oof. things that were before <laughs> only streaming are now going to be have to be shown on TV. Right, because you got nothing else to put on. Yeah, so... Yeesh. Which, which makes me wonder, it's like, if those do well on the sh on on actual TV, will they then have to give residuals on those too? I don't know. That's That seems a little weird. Like, the, the, this whole thing was them not getting residuals for these streaming shows, <laughs> and now they're putting the shows on TV, so... I don't know. <laughs> That's... There's probably some like fine friend, just like the whole Black Widow thing, where oh, oh yeah. these are only going to be streaming, so you'll only get streaming money, mm -hmm. and then oh, it doesn't say technically. <coughs> yeah, lots yeah, of probably. players will be involved. I'm sure. Yeah. So, like you said, it's not really hitting the average person yet, because the average person probably didn't even realize things <laughs> were like bad. They just realized, oh, this, you know, this people might even think this is a new show. Is you know is is airing on, on ABC, um, but I think in a year or two, we're gonna start seeing just how bad things are getting for these studios. Because to put it in perspective, the last time there was a writer strike was two thousand eight. Mm. In the summer of two thousand nine, within months of each other, the movies Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen. X-Men Origins of Wolverine Oof. and Dragon Ball Evolution came out. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so those movies were pretty much made like with a very limited writing staff. Like Revenge of the Fallen literally did not have a script when it was first put in production. <laughs> So without a script and without actors at all, like you can't even like, like directors outside of this can't even like try to make something. No, they can't even because actors aren't even going to be involved. No. So yeah, um, like in a way, I totally want everything to go right for them. I think the writers, especially, have been shafted for years, like, like with you know little to no job security, no residuals for streaming, especially, like. You know, just very low wages in general. Like, they they definitely, you know, they're the ones that make the show, so they, then movies, they deserve more. But also, a part of my brain is like, 
can we just wrap this up as fast as possible? Because Andor season two is coming up soon, and that kind of needs good writers to make that work. Yeah. I kind of want the Batman to come out on time. That's, yeah. You know, August 20, you know, October 2025. Like, you know, these things could, like, as a consumer who actually knows what's going on, like, studios just just do it. <laughs> just let them work. Come I mean, on. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, at the moment, I think the writers and the actors need it more than the studios do. But if we get to that point where the common man is like, this is so stupid, then it's the studio's problem. So like yes. both sides are banking the okay first, exactly, mm -hmm. pretty much. But yeah. if the writers can and the actors can hang on, then they'll win. They just mm -hmm. have to hang on for a while. Because like certain, studi certain major studios could maybe get by like... I think Disney will be fine, obviously. Yeah. I think, like, Sony will probably be fine. Their movie studio isn't, like, their biggest yeah. thing. But, Plus, like, they have video games, too, and that's not even affected, right? No, that's no, like no. Video games thing. and uh, animation right now was not affected by that. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll probably still get at least a decent amount of... Uh, actually, it is for writers. Mm -hmm. Writers will not be able that's to... That's what I was thinking. Games. I was about to say, right? It's not voice actors? Voice actors. Or, or, so voice actors are still um, yeah they're under a up. different guild so they're not okay right. yeah okay but writers replies to animation live action everything yes it's specifically okay. the screen actors guild so anything with the, you know, you see their face uh, whereas okay, like sense. you know voiceover actors for 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 stuff that's not really going to be impacted they're on, they're um, like we're okay being short <laughs> pretty basically. pretty much because they have been for way like forever yeah. Like, like, you know, people like Yuri Lowenthal and Kevin mm. Michael Richardson and, you know, John, uh, John DiMaggio, like all these people who are yeah. prolific in their field. Oh, yeah. Like, Tori Baker, like, all these, like, yeah. goats of their own, like, industry. But Like, they should be way richer than they are. <laughs> yeah! Like, um, I'm everyone's childhood, yet no one knows mm, me. Like, come on. Yeah. Uh, video games are not going to be impacted at all. That's completely different. Mm -hmm. different thing like there might be some writers for for games and stuff that might you know stop out of solidarity but generally speaking especially in japan and europe and other places they're not going to be yeah they're like, no. <laughs> um and yeah just for the record this is mainly impacting american studios i know uh like i said europe has their own their own uh their own unions over there so so like yeah, like uh, British shows and those kind of things. There, those will probably still be going theoretically, but yeah, as of right now, stuff is just on on hold. <laughs> so hopefully, studios can just get their act together. And apparently, one one person did a did a calculation. If every single major studio came to the table and negotiated the the terms as is. Collectively, every single major studio, Disney, Netflix, Universal, Warner Brothers, Paramount, all of them, you know, there's, you know, several others that are part of this. If all of them came together and, you know, agreed to the deal, it would be less than 1% of all of their annual, annual revenue would be able to fix this. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not super shocking because you could say the same thing about like every company in yeah. America right now, where it's just like we're making record like, profits, but we're laying off half our staff. Like, okay, right? Uh, like, you know, or we're just not. You know, here's a pizza party instead yeah. of a raise. Where it's like, <laughs> how do y'all not have the budget if we just made record profit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you get like I like it's so funny. You know what I think is the funniest thing ever? Mm -hmm. Like when you tell people in the finance department y'all don't have the money to give them a raise where it's like yes we do <laughs> <laughs> i don't like i gave you those spreadsheets you're looking at mm -hmm. like what are you like no we'd rather we'd rather give our ceos other people the c-suite millions of extra dollars because they're doing such a bang up job because we made more money but we because of that we have to lay off or or you know not treat our workers well Yep, so that yeah, they can that's... they can stay happy and keep making us money because they're the ones doing all the work anyway. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that, that's an entirely different podcast. We ain't gotta go in there, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, but like, but it was relevant because you know Bob Iger has like I think he got like an extra fifty million dollars last year because of record breaking Disney profits. Same with the, David Zaslaw got a raise for doing nothing. <laughs> fifty million dollars as a bonus. <laughs> like these people who are actively destroying wow. their companies. Yeah. You know, yes. Netflix, you know, that yes. CEO is also one of the highest paid people in, in Hollywood. Like, these people should not be getting this much money. <laughs> I know they, I know, especially Disney has a lot of stuff that Bob Iger has to look over. But, like, come on. <laughs> Who needs that much money? Who can spend that much money? <laughs> oh, I'm sure they can spend it. I mean, there's, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of dumb stuff you can buy. Like, yeah. I am sure they'll find a way, you know. Yeah. But. But regardless, that like, just know that in the you know in the near future there might not necessarily be a lot of stuff to to you know coming out because of of because a part of this is the fact that the actors can't even promote promote their movies coming out like currently uh, you know the Marvels those actors can't promote their like the movie if they. This is this continues through November. The movie will just kind of come out, and there won't really be any press for it because there's oh, no one to advertise so it. That's so weird. Yeah. yeah, like they can't post anything on social media about it. They can't go to premieres. the company can still advertise it, right? The company can, but like, right. But know. it's not going to be like the yeah, like the actors aren't going to be like, hey, check out my movie in November, or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's gonna feel weird. Mm-hmm. And there's gonna be no like red carpet or anything. <laughs> At least not the actors, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> for, for, haunt, well, for the haunted mansion, which apparently is either out or coming out. I don't know why they're making another one of those in July, but whatever. Um, <laughs> apparently, the, uh, Disney had to get like costumed actors that are in the Disney parks to walk that red carpet to advertise haunted mansion. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. I mean, great for the parks people. They, they're, you know, not, they're not getting paid an extra for that. No, no. I know. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But I guess that's an experience. You could say you walk the red carpet. I mean, that's sure. kind of the dream, I guess. But like, yeah, yeah, you're right. They're not going to get it. Yeah, those Disney people did not get paid nearly enough no. either. But that's, a whole, that's another. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh well, like like I said, hopefully it gets resolved positively soon, because yeah, stuff that we like we will be affected, and I don't want to sound selfish, but that's kind of how the position we're in. <laughs> um. Anyway, sp- speaking on that, uh, a week before the actor strike was officially, you know, happened, um. Set photos were leaked for Deadpool 3, officially showing off the Wolverine costume. Yes. Yeah, it looks, it looks good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it look. I mean, yeah, the sleeves are different, but it's the OG suit. I mean, yeah. like, probably not going to wear the mask a ton just because, like, we don't want, you know, I mean, we don't want to Jack, man. I want to see yeah. him. I, I have a feeling he's going to wear the mask, like, once. Mm-hmm. And I think I wouldn't be surprised if, like, if he has the sleeves on, and then halfway through the movie, he like rips them off. <laughs> that'd be yeah, that'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, but even if he doesn't, just how he nah, looks I mean, in those pictures looks looks great. Yeah, it looks great. And it's, yeah, yeah. It's Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine. Like, what's not to love? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Like we know for a fact, there's going to be at least one one fight between Deadpool and Wolverine, oh, absolutely. which hopefully will be better than the last time those characters fought. <laughs> We don't talk about those <laughs> um, but yeah, again, it, it's very funny that the, the, those set photos were leaked or shown, whatever, and then just a few days later, mm-hmm. production has to halt because the actors strike it. <laughs> and that movie is probably going to get delayed despite it actually moving up. or Because it was going to be released in September, I think, of next year, but then it got moved up. To replace Captain America, which was delayed to July, but now I'm pretty sure Deadpool is going to have to be pushed back again to 
I don't know. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> also, July, uh, July 4th, Captain America movie is genius, by the way. But, yeah. if they do that. But, I mean, hopefully, yeah, we don't have to push everything back. But, like, I also do want, you know, the people to get what they deserve. But it's also, like, oh, boy. Yeah. Um, it's... <laughs> And it's again. I want to point out. Last time with the writer strike, a Wolverine and kind of Deadpool movie came out, and it wasn't very good. So, <laughs> so let's not repeat history here. <laughs> <laughs> but nah. in a vacuum, it looks very good. Like I'm very excited for this movie. Uh, I like. I've always been excited for Deadpool for a potential Deadpool three, even before Wolverine was announced for it. But yeah, they're that that's gonna be a good movie. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Um one more thing for Disney. Uh a new trailer for Ahsoka was shown <laughs> coming out in August. And yeah, it it, it looks good. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> um yeah, I have a feeling we're going to get another instance of Order 66 happening, which I'm personally not tired of. <laughs> I know it happens in every single Star Wars thing now, but I, I don't care. I mean, it looks good. I, I like how they get the increasingly longer YouTube videos of every Order 66 uh, scene we've seen. <laughs> and they're always like, it's like everything, like the games, movies, TV shows. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lars Mikkelsen looks great as Thrawn. Um, you know, uh, obviously Ahsoka looks great, like. Those people she's fighting looks great. The like supporting cast, it just all looks, all looks good. Yeah, yeah. I'm for it. Like I'm, I'm all for it. Like I, it's one of those. It's interesting because like when you know when I first uh, Ahsoka when Ahsoka <laughs> first showed up in Iron Mandalorian, it was very like, oh my gosh, like is she gonna get her own show? And they're like, yeah. yeah. And we're like, oh, and now it's like, oh yeah, it's happening. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. It's just like. There, I like how there was no like, will they won't they? It was kind of like, yeah, we're doing it. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> like, we know. We yeah, know. Like we Dave, know. Dave Filoni is not going to spearhead, you know, this this like section of the Star Wars universe and not have his character get his, get her own show. Um, As he should, because I mean, like, he that was a great character that's been added, and like, granted, you know, from humble beginnings of oh, this annoying little girl to like, the, arguably. Even one of the best characters, so mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, do your. I mean, shocker, Dave, get it right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm hoping. I know people weren't, you know, super hot on uh, Mandalorian season three. I think it probably is. Prob it probably is the weakest of those three seasons. Um, yeah. Hopefully that doesn't, you know, spill over into Ahsoka either from the production side or just fan. You know, just general per perception side, like you was know, like, oh, after Mandalorian, I don't know if I'm uh, if I really want to watch another Star Wars thing right away. But like, I don't know. I feel like they're going to be very different shows, <laughs> so I mm -hmm. I'm not worried personally. So yeah. yeah, I think it'll be fine. I think that was just I think people were just kind of like when a season doesn't go exceed the previous expectations of like S tier, mm -hmm. everyone's like, oh, it's fallen. Everyone's so quick to say something's fallen off when it's just like, right. I think it just wasn't S tier this one time. <laughs> yeah, It'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that's uh, it's releasing in August with a two episode premiere. So nice. you like to see nice. this. <laughs> I do like those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, moving right over to something else that had a two episode premiere. My Adventure with Superman came out. I've only seen the first episode because I still don't have Max. But mm -hmm. but the first episode is on YouTube free. Yep. So I watched that. I'm digging the show. <laughs> Dude. It's good. Like, it gets first of all it gets superman which was the biggest thing because mm -hmm. i was like if we do this like yeah like it gets to superman like his, his part i love clark he's he he i will say it's a little interesting because it's like it feels like he's still kind of like 
getting into his powers, which is not something you would expect at this point. Yeah, like, I don't mind Superman being a clumsy himbo, but but just not being able to open a door seems a little yeah. extreme. He's, like, 20-something years old. Like he should yeah. be able to do that. <laughs> he, like, accidentally, like, destroys his alarm clock trying to snooze mm -hmm. and, like, rips his shoe in half trying to put it on. It's kind of, like... You're, I feel like you're too old to be doing that yeah. at this point. Yeah, like, that. writing wise, it kind of felt like, like the, this character, like you know, we first saw him as a kid who just learned his powers, and it almost feels like one day has passed, and now he's twenty, but he's still figuring it out. Which, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, and I know he in the in that scene, he is super nervous about his first day working at the planet, so he's probably a little more. You know, a little more amped, a little more jittery, and whatnot. That that's what made him but rip still. those things. But like it's, it's, yeah, it's a little, yeah, it, it's it was a little distracting. But I, got, but that was only the first like five minutes, and I got over it. Yeah, it got, yeah, it got a little over. But I mean, other than that, I really like Clark. Like we, you know, like we kind of brought him earlier. It's like he's he seems very just like you know he's a great guy. He's very like oh I gotta save the cat in the tree because. It needed help, and I just had to. Yeah. And I could help. And, like, that's Superman. It's like, yeah, it's not because, like, I'm greater than thee. I just, like, he's a guy who feels like he always needs to help people, and he does. And mm -hmm. that's that's the most Superman thing there is. Yeah. And I really like the dynamic between him, Lois, and Jimmy. Like, yes. Jimmy just being... Just, Jimmy's hilarious. Just... Ex like not stupid they could easily do the thing where he's the dumb one but he's just very aloof very unaware yeah. yet like he's you know trying to be this great reporter who's always you know always on cue always there for the perfect shot but he just you know is very like he lives with superman he can't tell that he's superman like that's that's very funny that's <laughs> a little, yeah that's a, i do like their dynamic of their roommates i feel like that's a nice touch yeah and like, yeah, and he kind of, and he can kind of also, he kind of like, he can help him lean into, yeah, Clark's just always been like that. He's just, yeah, he can't, yeah, he's just weird. He just, he breaks stuff. He falls over, mm -hmm. whatever. And I really like Lois too. I like her. She's got that like peppy optimism, but also kind of like, not sneaky, but kind of like, oh, you didn't think about that, did you? Like kind of, I don't know. She, I really like the main three characters. They seem very not only likable but they feel they feel very real mm -hmm. i think that's a big plus yeah um again i haven't seen past the first episode but i harley quinn's coming out soon as well so we're gonna up our yep. hbo sorry max subscription soon and i'll be able to to watch more but i am i'm here yeah. for it <laughs> and the animation looks great yes i adore the like pseudo anime-esque style yeah man. it's from the same studio that made legend of korra and that yep <laughs> that shows like yeah it looks like that's that studio is very it's very hit or miss with like the quality of the writing and like what the actual show is but the animation is always stellar yeah. like that I mean, the colors yeah that bolt the voltron show they made is not good but it looks really good <laughs> 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 But it looks very good. This, the animation style of Superman is very similar to that, and I, I like that. Yeah, it looks really good. Like as a colorblind person, the colors pop out mm -hmm. even to me, so I know it just looks insane. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, um, and like I just mentioned, Harley Quinn uh, is coming on July 27th. So, so yeah, sometime either late this month or next month, we're gonna. You know, get Max again, which I haven't had it since January because I just I was mad at them. I didn't really feel like giving them any money. <laughs> that's fair. Was it? <laughs> it's a, that's fair. Yeah, um, I haven't really needed it since. There was like one time, I think it was like Kung Fu Panda or like some random movie that we wanted to watch, and we were like, let's let's see where it's on. It was on Max. I was like, oh, I guess not that not today, but <laughs> today, old friend. I, yeah, especially since a lot of their shows are currently on Netflix, so I haven't yeah, really needed it. <laughs> yeah, um, but also my adventure of Superman. Apparently, when it was first like put into production, they actually ordered two seasons, so we'll get at least two seasons of the show. So nice, good, very good. Um, next up, uh, Blue Beetle got got its newest trailer. 
And it's one of those trailers that, yes, it objectively is pretty good, but I feel like I've seen the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of has the, like, Sony versus Venom vibe where it's like, yeah, remember that really cool scene you saw? Yeah, that's the scene that, like, that's, yeah, that, that that's was it. it. <laughs> you saw the whole scene, like, and that's the best scene in the movie. It's like, well, okay. Kind of, yeah. Like, I feel like we've seen the best three scenes in the movie already, and, like, mm. the rest is kind of just going to be... And the best jokes, too. I think that's the scary part. Yeah. Because, like, I worry that, like, the rest of the jokes are not going to hit at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure George Lopez is very funny in this movie, but how many more jokes does he have in him than what was in the trailer? But Right? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm excited for it. I, like, my, ho my hopes are only... My hopes aren't, like, that high, because, like, is Blue Beetle, I feel like even the studio didn't put that much effort into making the movie because they didn't expect it to be, you know, that successful because it's not, like, a big-name superhero. Yeah. But after The Flash, you know, expectations are at least higher than that. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I... I don't think it'll do very well at the box office, unfortunately. That's just kind of the climate we're in. Um, but I hope it's at least fun. You know. I think it'll yeah. be fun. <laughs> anyway, it could be a sleeper hit like Black Adam was. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Again, did do great at the box office, but I had a lot of fun watching it. Yes, so. I did enjoy that movie, yeah. despite, you know, one of my friends thinks it's one of his favorite movies, which, again, he doesn't watch a lot of movies, so I give him that pass, uh, but okay. it's always so funny, because he's like, yeah, but that was so good. I'm just like, hey, that wasn't that good. It's like, <laughs> not, let's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's so funny, because he's like, he's not a movie guy, and it was really mm -hmm. funny, because we watched Prince of Egypt the other day, and he's like, oh, that was really good, too. I'm like, but was it as good as Black <laughs> Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was just, no, it, it was a whole thing, like, but. I, I'm going to go on record saying Prince of Egypt is one of the best movies. Oh, yeah, 100%. Period. It's on my top five. Yeah. It's like, in my top five. Like, top period. ten for sure. Like, it is fantastic. Like, no. <laughs> like, it beats like, almost every Disney movie. It is. Yeah. It is phenomenal. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, I mean. I was like growing up. The nostalgia with that movie is also like mm -hmm. a thousand too, but it's also the soundtrack is S tier. The animation is unreal. Oh, yeah. It's great voice acting. It's great storytelling. It's great everything. Like, it's like the only thing you can say that I don't like about this movie is that, like, I don't even know. Like, it's, I don't, like, I don't, like, 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 unless you just have a stance against. Like Christian movies, but even then, it's it's not even like yes, it is the What's Moses the... story, but like it's not like you know ham fisted about it. You know there are objectively way like way more like over the top. Yeah, yeah, Christian it's not movies. like it's just a story. Yeah. <laughs> like it's it's just it's depicting a story that does happen to be part of the religion. But it's like it's not like it's like a in your face like you must convert kind of movie yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> like it's not it's. it's... Just it's, very it's just an excellent movie. Yeah, I just, yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Um, <sighs> yes, it is. Where is I think it's on Amazon Prime. Somewhere. At least it was. I, I might have to go. <laughs> I might have to go. I think it was. On, it was on something a while ago. I was on Peacock. Ah, before. that's fair. I guess it was DreamWorks, and there you. Oh no. Yeah. 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 Universal. Okay. Yeah, but still, <laughs> yeah, <We're>, whatever. <laughs> anyway, anyway, but yeah, Blue Beetle. We'll see, but we'll see. Um, yeah. Okay, so last up for superhero stuff. Uh, the cast for Superman Legacy keeps getting bigger. Um, yeah, and like, I know when the movie was first pitched that it was pitched as as, as a movie with Superman. You know, being Superman for, I think it was two years, but coming into his own in a world where superheroes already exist. Mm -hmm. And, like, I was expecting people like, you know, Stargirl, Our Man, uh, Sandman, like these, maybe Hawkman, like these, like, you know, very, like, classic Legion of, uh, sorry, uh, Justice Society characters mm -hmm. that has been around. No, 
Nathan Fillion is Green Lantern. Um, <laughs> and not just Green Lantern. Guy Gardner. Not just Green Lantern. The fourth Green Lantern. Specifically, Guy Gardner is hilarious to me. What's even funnier is this man has been voicing Green Lantern in, in DC stuff since like 2005. Like he, it's been a while. He's been Hal Jordan in so many... DC animated movies, shows, just, yeah. Like, <laughs> and then they finally bring him in to play Green Lantern, and he's Guy Gardner, right? It's very funny. <laughs> I mean, I feel like he, he has to know enough about the character now to be like, really? Right. <laughs> Guy Gardner? <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure James Gunn has bigger plans for, you know, for uh, uh, Hal Jordan and John Stewart and maybe even Alan Scott, but like, it's, because they have their own, like, buddy cop TV show coming out, and I'm sure mm-hmm. Nathan Villian will be a part of that. But, like, it, I mean, in the comics, uh, Guy Gardner is a bit older than than Hal Jordan anyway, so it works since Nathan Villian's in his 50s. Like, it makes enough enough sense, but it is still very funny that, like, if if a Green Lantern movie were, were to try to come out, Hang on, let me let me back up. If a if a <laughs> if oh, if gosh. like if this kind of movie in this kind of universe made by competent people were trying to were trying to come out 10, 15 years ago, I feel Nathan Fillion would be a shoe in to play him. <laughs> that last trip was hilarious. But made by competent people. <laughs> But instead, Guy Gardner. It's like, okay, sure. Okay. I mean, I get. I mean, my thing is maybe he already had somebody else in mind for a Hal Jordan. Oh, so, sure. like, it's very much like a we want you on this council. <laughs> we don't necessarily want you on yeah. the rank of master kind of thing. And I think it's good for him, too, because I mean, it's still a big bunch, because he's mostly a TV show guy. Yeah. Really? Yeah, the rookie. So, because like, I think, yeah, the like, rookie, like, Castle and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But. I mean, you know, it's still, you know, it's, it's still a Green Lantern. It's just not yeah. probably the most favorite. And I think, anyone. and I think Guy Gardner is a great one to go up, like, like to be like somewhat of an adversary for Superman. Like, I don't know if they'll fight, but like, nah, probably just, but just you know, at least bicker at because you know, yeah. Guy Gardner is very full of himself. He's very like, he's he's he doesn't you know, like being around rookies, even though he is one, like just these, <laughs> it's, it's like, just not the best person. Not a very it's pleasant Superman person. Is. Superman yeah. clearly is. So. <laughs> right. It's like, it's, it's, it's a very good, like small foil for this. Yeah. And he, and also like, if there is, I have, well, we get obviously get more into the other uh, superheroes later, but I have a feeling there's going to be a scene where these other superheroes are getting their butt kicked by some bigger villain like, it's going to be satisfying watching Guy Gardner get his butt handed to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but on top of Guy, Gar- uh, Guy Gardner, we also have Hawk Girl, played by Isabella Mer- Merced. Who, yeah, Isabella Merced, who, if you don't know that name, she's the girl that played Dora in that recent uh, Dora the Explorer movie. You know, like four <laughs> years ago. <laughs> forgot about that yeah cool yeah okay like hot girl i guess all right mm -hmm. yeah like i really really hate it when people try to clown on a casting or clown on an actor because they played a different character it's like how could she be hot girl when she played dora when she was 18 like because she was a child like i'm like <laughs> like that was her first big role as an actor you gotta start somewhere like what are you doing <laughs> yeah, and like, it doesn't really matter i feel no. like it's like that's an entirely different movie an entirely different everything it has mm-hmm. nothing to do with this i mean all she has to do like like if she's an actress like just play the role assigned like that has nothing to do with Dora. they're not gonna be mm-hmm. like all right just do dora again like they're yeah. not like like, yeah, certain characters play themselves and everything, but that's a very specific yeah. thing. It is going to be a little, I guess, sad would be the best word. Because, like, I really liked Hawkman in Black Adam. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously that actor is a lot older than than this actress playing Hawk, Hawk Girl. So I don't I don't think he's going to be brought over. But, yeah. 
But, man, if that movie did one thing really good, it was casting people to play the characters in that movie. Like, outside of Black yeah. Adam, which was kind of a you know known quantity. But like, yeah, but that was, yeah, I mean, that was kind of doing its own yeah. thing. But... Like, Dr. Fate, Pierce, Dr. Fate Pierce was Brosnan was fantastic. Um, yes. You know, the guy they got to play Hawkman. And like just also the costume design. I'm pretty sure the same costume designer from that movie is going to be uh, in, in other stuff. Like, oof. Are, yeah, that doc, like everything about Doctor Fate was amazing. Yes. Like the costume was awesome. Like the helmet looked so good. Yeah, and I didn't love like, how it didn't have eye holes, but it's yeah. But like, I think it kind of like, I mean, it probably would have like messed with the like, like <laughs> they tried to like, extra shine it or yeah. whatever. But I wish like, it could have just had like glowy eyes or something. But... Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. I was like, they could have just like the white like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh well. But then again, maybe it's kind of like hammer home the like it's not him thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but but if if I'm remembering right, and it is the same costume designer, you know, Hawk Girl is gonna look fantastic. Yes. So that's good. Um, we also have, oh dear, Edu Gathegi. Edu Gathegi. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> we'll go with it. Playing Mr. Terrific. If you don't know who that is, <laughs> do you remember in X Men First Class when they killed the guy who can't die? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. he was um, Darwin. Oh gosh, what was Darwin. Yes. Yep. Well, he like he's supposed to adjust to everything, and then he just like adjust to this. And then he and didn't. Then he just kind of somehow. yeah, yeah. He like <laughs> like at first I was like, is he gonna just like. Turn to dust and then like re No, no, nope. he's just gone. He's gone. I okay. Just adjust to everything. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I... he's giving it. He's giving it another chance to be a, a cool superhero. So Mr. Mr. Terrific is is, okay. a, is a is a good choice. <laughs> yes, Terrific's an awesome character. It's yes. done well. So he's one of those one of those characters that James Gunn just inexplicably adores, and like like at. I think it was the day he was announced as the head of DC Studios. He just posted, you know, in lieu of nothing, just posted a random picture of Mr. Terrific to his Twitter page. It's like, all right, guess we're getting one of these soon. <laughs> I mean, like, Mr. Terrific is very much so a DC character that the majority of people have never heard of. Mm-hmm. That's actually really cool. So, like, yeah. I'm for it. Like, I only know him from Justice League Unlimited as the guy who replaced Martian Manhunter as the guy in the chair yeah. for Justice League, and he didn't Pretty really much, do yeah. anything in that show. I know he has incredible powers, but like, yeah, no, he he's like, anything. he's like half Batman, half like it's like it's like because he's like super athlete, super like you know superhuman peak abilities, yeah, genius te- level intelligence. Te- Kind of, yeah, like, te- yeah, like, te- yeah. it's weird. It's like, yeah, he's, he's like kind of like, yeah, like technopath, but also just mm-hmm. really, really just, you know, mechanical genius. You know, mm-hmm. him and Lex are like right there with like mechanical genius mm-hmm. and like stuff like that. But he's just, like, he's just, he's a very well rounded, very awesome character. And he's mm-hmm. usually just like a cool guy, too. So, yeah. like, yeah, I think it'd be, I think James Gunn could definitely make this character very much like likable and household name so mm-hmm. like you know because i mean now everyone knows about the guardians of the galaxy which you know yeah. right so <laughs> yep. if we can make that if we can make rock if we can make people cry over rocket raccoon i think we can do this mm-hmm. and another character who has a pretty decent chance of becoming more of a household name is metamorpho Oh yeah, that was an interesting choice that was a very interesting choice like the other ones at least i could see in like a you know you know, uh, just League of America, just society type thing, but Metamorpho has always been like a part of the Outsiders, mm-hmm. and that's not really connected to. That seems like a much like further down the line thing, anyway. Yeah. Um, and he's played by Anthony Kerrigan, who is an who's the has a face I I recommend, but I didn't like I don't like recognize any of the movies he's in, so I don't really know where I know him from, but. But he looks like he could, you know, sure. <laughs> he's not going to like look like that most of the time because he's going to be a big purple and gray blob thing. But 
yeah, he, he he's Metamorpho is a character that I think is really cool, and I think could be a very interesting character that like gets like inspired by Superman to become a superhero. Because like mm-hmm. you know he, I don't remember remember what happens to him, but like something happens to him, he becomes a big pile of yeah. Goop. And that basically, and he's ostracized from society. But I guess like after maybe after he sees Superman do right, something he becomes impressive. a hero. Yeah, yeah. Like the the original. I don't know about the original original, but like the origin I'm familiar with is basically you know Simon Stagg from like Batman. Like yeah, the, yeah. Terrible business tycoon guy. Basically, Metamorpho was a night watchman at his company, mm-hmm. and him and his do- and Stagg's daughter had this whole like. You know they were together in a secret relationship but mm-hmm. obviously the dad doesn't approve so he like manipulates the situation for him to get like exposed all these chemicals and supposedly mm-hmm. kill him but he becomes this beast or whatever but basically uh-huh. batman convinces him to use his powers for good not revenge so okay yeah I could, that could very easily be a superman thing too i could easily see like lex Luthor doing that yeah just any i mean just anything yeah yeah um but yeah that's that's a pretty cool list of, of you know, yeah, superheroes like, are gonna random, be random, but like cool. Like he, James Gunn, King, uh, James Gunn made it very clear that it is still going to be a Superman movie with <laughs> Superman and Lois basically being the main characters. Right, like, what you want to hear of a Superman mm-hmm. thing, um, and these characters will do nothing more than just like essentially uplift the greater narrative of the movie, and I think yeah. that's perfect. I mean. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, there's a scene where Superman has to go to, like, Justice League headquarters or something, and they're just, who's on staff today or something. Yes. Like, they probably don't have, like, big roles or anything. They're mm-hmm. probably just around. And they're and he kind of thinks they're jerks a little bit. Like, and again, I think this is a very good, like, list of people. They, you know, Guy Gardner, you know, is super full of himself. Like, he, like, essentially tries to, like, pitch himself as the leader of this little group, even though he's super underqualified. Uh, hot girl is probably pretty fresh, so you know maybe she's a little like a cocky newcomer, but she's you know a little out of her league. Mister Terrific is, you know, uh, like he knows he's smarter than Superman, so he maybe he like kind of like isn't is a little antagonistic. Be like you know I'm better and smarter than you, so just sit this one out type of thing. Um, so I think I think that could be a, a decent like, not like direct adversary, but just something that he has to deal with while trying to figure mm-hmm. out who Superman is, basically. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and uh, the villain of this movie has not been revealed yet. Obviously, we know Lex Luthor is going to be in there somewhere, um, but there is a rumor that. Uh, you know that The Authority movie that is coming out? <laughs> <clears throat> Apparently, there's a, it's a heavy rumor that some members of The Authority might show up in this movie in some capacity. One of them being a character who I can never remember the name of. It's one of those characters that just, who just like, their name is it's like what they are. So if I can't remember their name, I can't remember what they're like, what their thing is. Um, uh, it, essentially, like, he this character builds himself as the god of cities like any city he's in like he essentially has complete control over the city and the bigger the city the more more powerful he is which i think could be a fantastic antagonist for both superman and lex luthor uh like we had to look up the authority the god of cities or something um it's like Mark somebody. Um, what? Jack Harswom is the king of cities. Yes, that's it. Mark's more. What? What? I've never heard of this. I mean, I've never heard of any of the de- of the of the authority. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but but like, if he Man. does show up to Metropolis and tries to either take it over or use it to you know fight superman not only will superman not like that lex Luthor's not gonna like that because you know nope that's my city <laughs> yeah it's his city so i could easily see him getting into his suit and try to fight you know very similar to in a uh death of superman the animated thing where like he tries to fight 
he tries to fight Doomsday for a second to be like, I am the city savior. I'm going to be the one to stop him. And he doesn't, but then Superman does end up saving the day. Like, I just think if that is how this goes, I think that could be very cool. I think that could be very interesting. And I think that's also a thing where, like, those three or four other superheroes couldn't really handle him because he's just so, uh, so, like, you know, Metropolis is so big. He's so strong, like, very crafty with how he does things. It's something they never fought before. I think it, yeah, I think that could be very cool. Mm, yeah, good dynamic. And again, it'd be one of those, like, <clears throat> Superman's goal isn't just to, like, you know, beat up the bag, but also protect his city that he loves. Yes. I think that's really good. Like, yeah, because he and is. show. Okay. Yeah, because he is literally using the city to help him fight. Superman mm. wants to minimize damage to the city. Yeah. Right, and at the same time, also Batman, you know, I mean, not Batman, Superman and Lex kind of show how, even though they're opposites, they also have a similarity as they both care for Metropolis more than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, well, we'll get more, more information about that probably, you know, later this year, next year, but as of right now, I have pretty high hopes for, for how this movie is working out. Like, oh, I never yeah. had any doubts about James Gunn making a Superman movie, uh, but and at first I was a little concerned that these other random superheroes were getting announced, but 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 I think if everything you know more or less happens how I'm thinking it will, I think this could be this could be very a very very cool Superman movie. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Like exploring all aspects of his characters. Of all aspect of his character involve other characters who probably won't really get much screen time outside of you know outside of team up stuff anyway like I just think it could be a good jumping off point for this universe yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> okay moving on uh, last little bit of news I have even though they announced this just like a couple of months ago. Netflix is officially removing their nine ninety nine dollar tier, but like nine ninety nine with ads tier. I already. I guess nobody was using that though. To be no. fair, <laughs> nobody. Because <laughs> you can't start something for, for that long. Mm hmm. No ads, no issues, and then be like, oh, yeah, here's an ad tier. Like, <laughs> no one's going to go for that, no. man. No. Like, I don't... I, I have a feeling not many... Like, not many uh, companies were supplying ads anyway. Like, <laughs> like not only were, was no one buying the, the service, the people that did have the, that tier... They were just getting the same three or four ads over and over again, <laughs> probably. Because um, even like even Hulu, I feel, has that problem where every you know every single commercial break, I know you have Hulu, Hulu Premium, but every single now. break, it's the same three or four ads. Yes. It's really annoying. <laughs> and they're long ones, too. Like, that's yeah. the thing. It's like, if you're going to have the same couple of ads... At least make them shorter, but like yes. the long, like two minute same ads, you're just like, oh, mm -hmm. I just I can't. Yeah. I, I had to. <laughs> I mean, it was it was a problem. Like yeah. you would just like you have time you forget what you're watching. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I never in my life would I ever even have considered going down to nine ninety nine to watch with ads. And enough people agreed that they were just like, no, we're not, we're not Can't doing do this. It. Absolutely not. Although one little interesting thing about the whole Netflix story that's been happening recently, you know how last month they they enacted the whole thing where if your if 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 your TV is not connected to your home network, you can't watch Netflix on that TV. Yes. So I don't know what happened, but. That was the case for my TV for a while. And then randomly, just one random day, it was actually June 30th, <laughs> but we just wanted to watch something on Netflix. And like, just not thinking, we were just like, I think like our, our, 
our smart TV has a thing where you can like talk into the remote and it, sh and it shows up. It's like getting whatever from Netflix and it pulled up. And then like half of the movie we're like, wait a minute, we're watching on Netflix. Like we're watching like, on the TV. It's like, what is this? <laughs> and, and then like, we're like maybe it's just because we, we got it through like yes. talking. Mm -hmm. No, we, we just went through next time we went to the Netflix app and to watch better call Saul and it just popped up. So, and I, I, la I asked my brother who lives, who still lives at home, which is technically the home network like that. It's still working for him. So I don't know what happened, but we, we're making it I work. Might try that. Like, I might try that after this then. I don't know. Uh, it, like it, it sucks that Netflix is getting, is barely suckering enough people to, to buy new subscriptions because they're away from their home network. But is there a, is there a weird loophole that I accidentally discovered that you don't actually have to do that? Could be. <laughs> Because it was always working for my laptop, so I was able to hook my laptop right. up to the TV through HDMI, so that worked fine enough. But it only through TVs did it weirdly turn it off. But it's working now, so let's just keep it that way. Go for it, yeah. <laughs> just go for it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> no idea, but I mean, maybe Netflix realized kind of that no one was going to go for this. But, but they were, know. but people were going for it. Yeah, I guess so, that is true. Which I don't understand. I don't know. Like, it's not worth it. Like, I, some people, I some maybe people I just, is, they're in the middle of Stranger Things and they're locked out and they're, the other, other company won't let them use it. So they just. It's like there's so many other like, streaming yeah. services. Like, if this was back when it was just mm -hmm. Netflix, mm -hmm. then that's one thing. But it's like there's ever. Like, I haven't used Netflix. I can't even remember the last thing I watched on Netflix. I haven't used mm -hmm. it in so long. Like, between, like, honestly, HBO, no, just Max or mm -hmm. whatever, Disney Plus, honestly, and like Crunchyroll, even for us lately. But like, yeah, yeah I haven't even touched Netflix in a couple months, I think. Yeah, um, it's it it's weird. I don't know if I'm the only one experiencing this, but I'm I'm just gonna keep writing it out until they tell me I can't. <laughs> so. Yeah, as you should. Yeah, but if it does kick me out, I'm definitely not going down to the to the nine ninety nine tier, mostly because it no longer exists, but also no. never a good idea in the first place. Anyway, <laughs> and Netflix ads just sound. I just don't even sound right. Uh -uh. No. <laughs> okay. Last thing here, we're doing a follow-up to the last Nerd Clash we did. Okay. Which is our box office face-off. Um. We did our prediction about which movie did we think would do more of the box office. Into the Spider-Verse, Transformers, Rise of the Beast, or The Flash. And I know, I'm wrong. I said Flash. And just <laughs> as a recap, I said Transformers, you said The Flash. We both agreed that it should be Spider-Verse. Yes. <laughs> Spider-Verse would be yeah, the best movie, weird. and we both agreed that it would, that it, uh, you know, um, it should be the best. Right. Of those three, <laughs> you want to guess which did the worst. <laughs> oh, I, Flash did the worst. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> fun fact, only one of these movies is actually no longer, is that only one of these movies is still in theaters. Yep. And it was actually the first one released. Yep. No, Spider Verse is still like I yeah. saw it last weekend. Like it's still in theaters. Yeah. yeah. So, The Flash, which released only on June sixteenth, is yeah, out, went gone. out of theaters real quickly. Yep. In a flash, you could say. Um, sure. <laughs> made, according to Box Office Mojo, which is the most accurate thing we're gonna get. It made only. Which I know we're talking in hundreds of millions only is well, I mean, for movies. Compared to like for reference, yeah. yeah. For on a two hundred twenty million budget, it made two hundred and sixty seven million six hundred and thirty one thousand three hundred and seventy eight dollars. <laughs> oh two hundred and sixty seven million dollars. Imagine think about that. How many years re like reshoots, recasting, all that years of that just for a little over your production your budget. budget like bro oh, that's man. crazy like that's rough there's th I, yeah like it is not like this movie had anything going for it it's not like 
it's not like this movie even had a chance to be good. Like you, I mean, like you really only said you thought it would be Flash just because, just out of like, I don't remember what your argument was, but it was like, I think, yeah, basically it was like, my big argument was like because it's live action, mm. it comes out the latest of the three. Mm. And because of uh, Michael Keaton, Batman, right. I thought it was going to have the mo- I didn't think it was going to be a lot. I didn't think it was going to be like, you know, I didn't think any of these movies were going to break a billion or anything. Mm. But like between the, you know, the latest of the three and also because Spider-Verse, even though it's amazing, was animated, was I didn't think it was going to get the respect. And because Transformers is kind of like, I feel like we're the Transformer train is kind of eh. falling off a little bit. Again, I don't know. That's. I think from the public perspective, at least, I don't mean specifically, mm. but I kind of just thought that was going to make, I thought it was going to be the best out of three, not so hot, like money wise making mm. products. But uh, yeah, I know I was totally wrong. I'm okay with that. Like I didn't want this movie to do that well at all. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, and I think that 267 was mostly because of Michael Keaton. It was mostly because a hundred percent. Like, Nobody was like, yes, Ezra Miller. Like, no. Yeah. Like, they had a very aggressive marketing push there at the end, and that maybe got some people seated, but it was no one, yeah, no one was there for the actual Flash stuff, which is a little depressing, because I think if it were actually a Flash movie, it would be a much better movie, but oh. it's not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think it's one of those things that it was a movie that, people were going to wait a week on mm-hmm. and hear back what the first people said. And everyone <laughs> when it thought initially was like, eh. yeah, it's not and no one else was like, okay. But like, if, and it's one of those things that like, again, I know we talked about this in the review, but I'm like the, the two, the two very thing did not mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Th- that did not work at all. Like that was a very no. bad call in my opinion. No. <laughs> So yeah, do do I think it deserved more? Uh, I don't I don't like just in the sense that I feel like this movie bombing as bad as it did could potentially have negative ramifications for DC stuff coming forward. Like Andrew Musetti was, you know, like before the movie came out, he was tapped to direct the Batman Driven the Bold. I like the Batman stuff in this movie, but I don't know if it necessarily carry if he could carry an entire Batman movie. And I think after this movie bombed, I don't know if James Gunn will trust him to do anything. Although, although then again, the bomb wasn't really his fault because it went through like three different directors and a bunch of different scripts. Like I don't know if it was his fault that it was bad. I I, just, I, don't, I don't know. It's like. Yeah, I do. I do think this confirms Ezra Miller was not is no is not. He, they're not the Flash anymore. That's that's not happening. <laughs> yeah. They're getting a new Flash. <laughs> yes, as, as as we should. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I will say this. I think that how I think every time this universe has a movie that kind of doesn't go well, it kind of helps slam the door on the Snyderverse, if you will. Which is fine by me because yeah. I've, I've, I've been saying we need to get past that for a while now. It so. is funny that Aquaman is still coming out later this year. Like that's still happening. <laughs> this? So, just, Why? Like that, they should have just they should have switched them. I think that would have been it would have been you would have had more time to finish making yes. the Flash look good because it still doesn't look very good. It does not. Um. Even if you had to delay Flash into twenty four, like make or just it so that, do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just have Aquaman come out first so you could officially be like, This is the Flash is it. <laughs> the Flash rewrote that universe, we're done. And then you could pretend like that whole thing never happened, make your own thing. But Yeah. But but yeah. Uh yeah, needless to say is this movie's not getting a sequel. Uh, I don't think anything with this is carrying over. Nope. Um, Nor should it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, the second highest. Well, actually, so, like, right at the tail end of us discussing this uh, last time, I did uh, kind of jokingly say, maybe the new Indiana Jones will outrank all three. I don't know. And it 
It did better than The Flash. It's still in theater, so it might do more in the end. But right now, uh, The Dial of Destiny is sitting at $312 million, which is not as high as I'm sure they were hoping on a, like a, on, on a, I think it was a $300 million budget. Oof. I think. Really? The movie's been in production since, or been in development since 2015, I think. So it just kind of. Uh, well, I guess, yeah, I guess that kind of inflates that number it, a bit. Yeah. Although, watching the movie, I don't know exactly where all that budget went. Maybe the, <laughs> that's like, what I was thinking. I mean, they like... shot on location for a lot of it. I maybe that's. Uh, yeah, probably. Maybe that, I don't know. Like, maybe Maz Mikkelsen just has a, a crazy writer and he has to be paid two hundred million. I don't know, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I doubt Apparently it. Apparently not. Like... <laughs> but regardless, three hundred twelve million is like it's. It's crazy just how inflated movie budgets are these days to the point where you have to make like seven, eight hundred million just to kind of break even. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure Disney was hoping people would be, you know, would be all in for another Indiana Jones movie and people just kind of weren't. Kind of weren't. Yeah. Again, it doesn't help that the trailers for this movie didn't really sell it. Like, I only saw it just because... I had recently seen the past for one in Indiana Jones, and I'm like, well, I might as well have the experience of seeing one of these in theaters. Have you seen it? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. No, I, I, I don't... I, 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 I forgot it's it not, came out. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not as bad as people make it out to be. It's like... It's, it definitely has a different feel since Spielberg isn't directing it, but, like, it's really not that bad. Like, a lot of the issues are... For all, all the same ones that all the other Indiana Jones movies have anyway. So, like, anyone who says it's the worst thing that ever come out... No, you're kidding yourself. It's fine. <laughs> um, but, yeah, $312 million doing more than The Flash was... Uh, it's... Yeah. I hope it... I hope Disney is happy enough with those, with those numbers, but I, I can't tell if they are. Anyway. Um, <laughs> moving on to the second highest of of this bunch it was transformers rise of the beast we were both wrong um, <laughs> that movie made a much more respectable 422 million seven hundred twenty two thousand six hundred and four dollars which is decent you know uh not as much as i'm sure uh paramount yeah paramount was hoping for since you know, in the past, these movies have been billion-dollar movies. Although, like, The Last Knight didn't do... I think it did, like, 700-something. Bumblebee was 300-something. And this is 400-something. So, like, you know, it's not bad. But, like, it, it easily could kind of start, like, a new era of, of this franchise. So, yeah. I will say the movie itself is really not as good as I was hoping it would be. Um, <laughs> like there's a lot of issues with it that are the exact same issues as previous Transformers movies despite having a very different creative team behind it I don't really know why <laughs> there's still a weird MacGuffin they have to get Optimus Prime is still a maniac I still don't really <laughs> love the human characters just a couple of things just could have been done very differently but at least it was short Less than two hours, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you gotta find the positives where they're there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, I, I I wouldn't mind more with more Transformers movies if they are like, if they're better than this one, which I think is possible because I really like Bumblebee. But you know it. I think I think this will not deter them from making Transformers movies in the future, but yeah. I think they're going to have to try something that looks a little different going forward. So yeah, like mix up the formula. One. <coughs> I think yeah, I think Transformers as a whole is still a well enough industry you can definitely still work with, but mm -hmm. yeah, you're probably going to have to mix things up a bit. Yeah, but at the top of the pack is. Across the Spider Verse, which again is still in theaters, so this number could go up even higher. Currently sitting at six hundred and sixty seven million two hundred and two thousand two hundred and twenty dollars. Nice. 
as it should be on the top. Yeah. Like, <sighs> like that's already double what the first one made. Which right. Right. Crazy. Which like, yeah, well, yeah, I think I didn't think this was going to happen, but I was like, you know, but I think enough people initially from the last one are like, hey, this was actually really good. Because I feel like the first one, people didn't find out how good it was till well after it came out. Yeah. And this one, they're like, hey, they're making another one. And, just, you know, the last one's really good. So let's do it. And, you know, people actually would have saw And it was, again, extremely good. And people were like, oh, this is great. And, you know, the memes and TikToks about it. Mm-hmm. Of, it's a Canada event. We're big for a while. And people yeah. like, wait, what's that about? And that got more people to see it. So, like, I think it did a really great job of just kind <clears> of... <throat> being consistently excellent mm-hmm. and that added to help this one and I feel like the third one has a great chance of making even more money because not only is it more than likely going to be that same S tier level of quality but also it's kind of a direct more of a direct follow up than this one mm-hmm. was to the last one so I feel like kind of had that end game effect where yep. statistically everyone who saw this movie has to go see this one too so yeah, I do think there's a very high chance of, of Beyond getting delayed either yeah, just a couple of months or even out of the year. Like, I, take it all the time you need. Like, if you if the writers yeah. and after strike is messing something up, like that's, that's, you know, understandable. But, like, even just giving the people more time to make it, because apparently the behind-the-scenes stuff for Across the Spider-Verse was not ideal. Uh, people had to work long hours and just people, you know, there was a lot of turnover and stuff. Just... You know, whatever you need to do to make Beyond the Spider-Verse as good as humanly possible in the right way, like, do that. Even if you need to wait till 2025, that's fine. <laughs> like, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, because again, like, they got delayed, you know, it got delayed originally, and then we were all like, hey, cool. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Do what you got to do. Take the extra time for those year-long scenes you have to animate and clearly it paid off because it Mm -hmm. all looks breathtaking so like yeah if you need a little extra time like grant they probably did these pretty much in one long thing but just want to like fine tune some details but yeah if they need to they can if they don't want to that's okay too Mm -hmm. it's probably still elite so i'm okay not waiting also but you know i'm just prepared for when that delay happens like oh okay (laughs) Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's exactly like the whole Tears of the Kingdom thing where it was like, oh, it's delayed, and we're all like, do what you got I do. never thought it would come that's out fine. the figure anyway. That's fine. Get, push it. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like, oh, that's fine. Totally take your time. And then well, we were rewarded, so it's all good. Like, yep, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's looking like, if all things stay the same, it's looking like that might be the second highest grossing superhero movie of this year. Like, Ooh. I don't... I don't necessarily have the highest hopes for the Marvels necessarily. Like, yes, the first one made over a billion, but it kind of had the, you know, if any were in game effect on that. And also it was the first big Marvel, you know, woman superhero that had that going for it. We don't really have that anymore. And also the fact that you have to essentially watch three different Disney plus shows to really know what's going on. Might deter some people. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. that's a good point. Because, like, you know, people are not... And, like, especially... Yeah, and I think... Because we have seen it is not poorly. Like, people have not been watching Disney Plus shows that go to movies nearly as much. Yeah. So, like, it wasn't as big of a deal for something like Multiverse of Madness. But that was only really one show. Kind of two, if you consider Loki. Uh Kind of three if you consider Spider Man, but even then, not really. Like, it's just, like at this point, you can just kind of expect Marvel stuff to like. If you haven't done the reading, you're gonna be confused. But yeah, <laughs> but you know, the Marvels was not, or Myth Marvel was not the highest watched thing. Secret Invasion thing is not really getting that much attention. Uh, WandaVision was three years ago, two years ago. It was a while ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like. Yeah, you know, some people might just not really get it. They're like, who are all these new characters? It doesn't have the Captain Marvel name anymore, just the Marvels. Mm-hmm. You know, Marvels, the Marvels is a little, you know, just doesn't have the same ring to us. Marvels, Captain Marvel, like, I don't know. It, 
I think it'll be a decent movie, but as far as like money wise, I could easily see it being this anticipated thing, but make up maybe a little more than Ant Man, like five hundred million or so. Yeah, I could see that. Kind of just like a solid medium there. Yeah. And then Aquaman, I have no idea. It could it could make a billion again, but also there's been literally nothing about that movie outside of like one still image of Aquaman. So I don't know what the even I don't even know what that movie is. <laughs> so I I don't know if it's if it's I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. Hope- hopefully, Barbie makes enough money that DC can, you know, keep doing their thing. Wonder Brothers would be like, okay, we made a billion over here. We can just give some of that to DC. <laughs> mm-hmm. If their movies are doing well, we're, we're doing well overall. Yeah. Um, yeah so, but Cross the Spider Verse, you know, definitely the winner of the summer so far. <laughs> I'm very happy that it did yes. that. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to bring in for discuss before we sign off? I do. I do. So I don't know if you saw this, but we got some invincible news. Yes, we did. We did. Yes. We have, there is two th- First of all, November 3rd. Yes. That's the official drop date, which is awesome because mm-hmm. that's the weekend of my birthday, which is great. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that's mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. And there's also, I think, like either like a special or like prequel. There's like an Adam Adam Eve prequel mm-hmm. that's currently on Amazon Prime right now. I believe. Yes, I haven't seen so, it yet, but I I, I no, saw I it there. Either. Yeah, so sure, and more yeah. invincible stuff. And I don't know if you saw the trailer, but bro, the casting is Dude, crazy. Like, legitimately, that might be one of my all-time favorite trailers. Like you didn't this trailer, you didn't need to to. <laughs> Like, you didn't need to sell me on the actual show. I already know it's going to be good. I already know right? the animation is going to be good. I like the characters. You just needed to show to me that there's more people in this show now. Like, this, so like, many. like, yes, you know, they get what you expect. You know, the guy that, that plays uh, the Explosion Man, whatever his name is, uh, uh, Jason Mark, Marks. whatever. Yeah. I can't, yeah, I, yeah, I can never say it. Jillian Jacobs, obviously, you know, Jackie Simmons yeah. there at the end. But, like, just that, like, splatter of, like, a hundred people. Yes! Including, you know, Ben Schwartz, Curie, not, sorry, uh, 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 Josh Keaton, Peter Cullen being there in the middle. Yes. It's like, it's like, they know what's up. Like, they, they knew. They, they know, knew. They know they're <laughs> royalty. <laughs> Like, that man has own, pretty much only done Transformers and Eeyore forever. It's like... <laughs> 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 like, he's not disrespected, but he's essentially been... Transformers tight- and Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's one of the most, oh, you know, one of the most prolific voice actors, really only doing two voices his entire career. Like, he's been in other things here and there, but that's, like, his thing that he's known for. They're, like... This is the stinger for the for this trailer. Is we're gonna have to show Peter Cohen in the trailer? Yes. <laughs> like this is not, this is how oh. you know it's one for the nerds. Like I love it. <laughs> yes. It's what that's what I'm saying. It's what like like the regular people don't know, but we know. You know what I mean? Like the nerds know. Like oh snap! Like you know, because it's like you know, you know, you made it when like you know the voice like the voice actors get you hyped for the show. It's like you mm. have officially graduated into the inner circle yeah. like that's but yeah i mean and i just love the way they did it too because it makes it feel like such a team project also mm-hmm. where they're like you know because these guys do not get shout outs like that and i really oh, yeah. like how they're just like yes we're doing this like mm-hmm. every because the voice acting has been arguably the strongest point of the show it's been yeah. elite since day one yeah so and i'm all for it I- I know people are just coping, but there is, it's been very funny watching people be like, Josh Keaton's in this, was shown in this trailer. There is a, there's a comic of Spider-Man Invincible teaming up. Wouldn't it be cool with Spider-Man? No, it's not happening. I mean, Josh Keaton also has to make money for other things. Right, like he he has, he's done other voices, man. Like he, he's but yeah, it's like he's he's Josh Keaton's in the cast list for uh for uh uh Marvel What If he's playing Spider Man and then it's like no, and then people are like who is this weirdo playing Spider Man? I thought it was Josh Keaton and, and he came on Twitter. It's like 
I never confirmed I was playing Spider-Man. Like, that was never going to happen. Like, what are you doing? But you're Josh Keaton. You, that's all you do. I, I, <laughs> I can like, play uh, Captain I, America. Why not? <laughs> I, mean, I, I do other things. I, 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 I'm embarrassed. I was like, Peter, stop it. I'm fighting for you. It's like... <laughs> Right. <laughs> what is the, like, like holy typecast Batman? Like, like, like just, whoever, like, whoever he plays is gonna do a great job. But like, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's funny. Oh. Like I get it, but still, it's just that's hilarious. And then Omni Man, just the stinger being, you should have died at birth. It's Dang. <laughs> like you gotta escalate from you should have stayed dead, so you should have died at birth. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> well, <laughs> no, it looks so good. I mean, from visually what we saw, certain people are coming back. There's a lot more Viltrumite stuff gonna mm. be going down. Like it, we're ready. It's yes. time. Like it, it's gonna be great. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we'll we'll cover everything else from San Diego Comic Con next week but that's that that is the standout thing so far it's like that is oh that's good <laughs> it's gonna be epic i'm so excited yes. oh yes yeah, yeah. I, they did say late 2023s so i guess november is as as i mean late. yeah <laughs> i mean yeah I, mean, I originally was thinking like i originally said like probably like around thanksgiving so mm. I'm, that this is fine yeah although that is the same day that dune releases in theaters yep so that's it's, true it's a be a good weekend. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That's gonna be good. I'm excited for that. I think, I think Loki is Loki October. I want to say so, but I'm I because I know that the the Echo show is releasing all at the same oh, time yeah. at the end of November, and I know that Loki will be over by then. But I'm trying to remember. Trying, trying to think. Uh, of Loki's Loki. October six. Okay. So I think there'll be one or two episodes overlap there, which is okay. fine. Because remember, Invincible had overlap with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. That's right. Yeah, dude. So that was a it was a tense weekend because I remember that Friday, uh, the, uh, the the episode where uh, <laughs> where um, U.S. agent you know killed that guy with the shield was like, oh, that's. Ooh, okay. And then, like, the next day, my brother and I watched the episode where they fought Battle Beasts. It's like, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's not a great day for heroes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Hopefully nothing like that happens in Loki, but you never know. <laughs> I mean, it could. We'll see. I don't know, but, man... Yeah. Whew. really excited though mm. yeah like like the, just thinking ahead like our, the list for if we do another like top 10 recap of favorite superhero things of this year like it is it's gonna be competitive for top obviously number one is Spider-Man but like you know like it's gonna be very competitive for like for what else is in there because uh, you know who knows maybe Craven could be a surprise hit I, I I mean, I, I think Craven in Spider Man Two might be great. That's, that's but a good point. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about just Craven on his own, but we'll see yeah. about that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, now that's all I've got from here. All right. So with that, we will see you all next time. Take care, everyone. <laughs>